Good morning. Welcome to Midway United Methodist Church. I'm so glad to see you here this morning. My name is Amanda Lane. I'm the associate pastor. We want to welcome everyone. We want to welcome everyone here to worship, whether you're in person or online. I'd also like to invite everyone to take the um, the tear off portion of your bulletin, fill that out, and let us know that you're here, you're present, worshiping with us. You'll notice on the back there's also a place for you to indicate any prayer requests you might have. I want to remind you all that next week um, we will have Family Promise on campus. This is an opportunity for all of us to serve and to give back to neighbors in need. Uh, Family Promise is a mobile homeless shelter, um, but they also work with the residents to bring them up to a place where they can purchase a place to live, that um, they have have financial stability. And we still have quite a few spots open for for different ways to serve. So I'd invite you to look at your midweek and see, um, click on the link that's in there, figure out different ways that you might be able to serve and give back uh, to those in our community. A reminder that on March the 19th, You're going to hear this a lot. March the 19th, we are celebrating 100 years of this historic chapel. I hope that you'll come and you'll join us that day. We'll have tours of the chapel, uh, self-guided tours beginning at 8.30, two worship services at 10 a.m., one here in the chapel and one in the sanctuary, and then a um, a lunch in the gym afterwards. As part of this historic, uh, this historic day, we want to invite you to purchase a, a keepsake ornament. We showed you guys these last week. There's some pictures in the, uh, in the midweek, but this is a glass ornament that has inscribed 1923 to 2023 and a picture of the chapel on it. In your bulletin today, there are order forms. If you would like to purchase a, uh, a, an ornament, please fill out this order form. Each ornament is $15, um, and you can put this in the offering plate here or in the back, and we'll make sure that we have, uh, we have an ornament for you. You can purchase as many as you like. I keep saying one. You can have 10 if you want. Um, and finally, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It's, uh, we begin the season of Lent on February the 22nd. Uh, In the morning from 6.30 to 7.30 and then 12 to 1 p.m., we'll have ashes to go. Uh, You can come by right under the portico out here and receive ashes. You don't even have to get out of your car. Um, And then we have a pancake supper, which is a fundraiser for the youth, at 5.30 to 6.30. And our Ash Wednesday service is here in the chapel at 7 p.m. this Wednesday. It is a beautiful day that we have to come into the Lord's house to humble ourselves and to worship. Let's prepare our hearts and let's prepare our minds for the worship of God.
Would you stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin? We were created by God to reflect the image of God. So now, let us be transformed in body, mind, and spirit to reflect the whole image of God. Let us pray. We ask that you would open our ears so that we may hear your voice. Open our minds so that we may receive your eternal wisdom. Open our spirits so that we may know your leading and guidance. And open our hearts so that we may receive your wonderful love. Amen. Amen. And as you remain standing, if you will open your hymnal, turn to number 133. And I am going to listen to you and our amazing choir as we open today with leaning on the everlasting arms. Would you join me now as we affirm our faith using the historic Apostles' Creed? You can find this printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Won't you sing with us?
in the last. Come speak. After a moment of silent prayer, I would like to ask you to also pray for um, Pastor Jeannie's family uh, for the passing of her mom, Dawn Dakin, uh, this week. And uh, the celebration of life service will be held on Monday, February 27th, uh, here at 11, um, 11 a.m. here at church. Um, also, there is another prayer uh, uh request that I'd like to ask you also to pray uh, is for the 46,000 uh, people that uh, passed away because of the of the earthquake. We've been praying about the earthquake in, in Turkey and Syria for this uh, past few weeks, but uh, this is this is devastating, and uh, I'd like for you to, to also consider uh, giving to the, uh, uh, the emergency relief, uh, you know, because of the earthquake uh, through UMCOR. And uh, you can uh, go to the giving page on the website or through the app and select uh, to give for this specific cause. Or also you can uh, give a check and on the memo you can write it's for UMCOR for, uh, to give for the earthquake. So after a moment of silent prayer, I'd like to invite you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we, we first of all thank you. You have been faithful. You are faithful. We pray, Lord, because we can see you at work in our lives each and every day. For all the blessings, for your, for your mercies that are renewed each and every morning. For your love we give you thanks we praise your name and even in the midst of uh, difficult times even in the midst of uh, of chaos we can see you there we can find your presence there and we also give you thanks you are our great Father. You are a wonderful God. The only God. The most powerful. And we offer our lives to you this morning. Lord, we pray for Pastor Jeannie's family. For the passing of her mom. We pray that the Holy Spirit, Lord, finds them where they are giving them the rest they need in their hearts giving them comfort giving them hope and we also pray Lord for because we know that Dawn is now with you enjoying the best the best time of, of her eternity with you. Lord, we we also pray 
for not for the not only for the 40,000 lives uh, that were that were lost during this hurricane, but we pray for all the other thousands and thousands of people that are now mourning the lives of these uh, of these people that are in grief. I can't imagine how many people are now suffering. How many people have been affected by this catastrophe. But we know that you are faithful. And we know that even though they, uh, they don't know you, even though they might have different faiths than, than ours, You can meet them. And you can make them know that you are there. Lord, we pray for our church. For all these people that are still suffering, that are suffering around us or far from us or anywhere. May you make this church a, a church a beacon of hope. That people can find you through us. Because the church is not the building. The church is each is uh, us gathering together. It's us, the people. So may us, Lord, be called and raised as beacon of hope to the people in need. Lord, we thank you again. You are faithful. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, church. I want to invite you, if you will, to take your worship guide and inside your worship guide, I'm going to invite you to do two things with it. One is to reach inside and pull out that message outline for the day. Uh, that message outline is there for you to engage with. You can fill in the blanks that are there. We're going to be reading some scriptures together, and I oftentimes remind you maybe the most important thing might be what you might write in the margin if you hear the Holy Spirit whispering over your soul today. Uh, we've been in a series called Stronger, and I want to let you know that after Ash Wednesday, this upcoming week, we're going to start a brand new series in the Lenten season called I Love My Church. It's going to be a time to celebrate God's family here, His faithfulness to this church. It's also going to be a time for us, of course, to celebrate this historic chapel. So I don't want you to miss it, but I also want to invite you to invite other people to be a part of that, your family and your friends. We're also going to have um, a Lenten devotional during that season, and that starts next Sunday. And so you can sign up online for that in our midweek, but one of the coolest things is since you already have that little tear-off section, I noticed in the very back, have you noticed that it, actually at the very bottom of it, it says, sign me up to receive Midway's weekly e-newsletter. If you're not getting our newsletter, you can check that box. But here's an idea. If you want to receive that Lenten devotional, just right beneath that, maybe you'd write in a little pen, sign me up for the Lenten devotional that's going to start next Sunday. By the way, that devotional is going to be written by our people, for our people. You don't want to miss that I Love My Church Lenten devotional that starts next weekend. Well, I heard a funny story this past week. I thought I'd begin with it and share it with you. Three men were hiking together and they in their hiking journey, they came up to a river that they wanted to cross. It was a raging river. It was moving rapidly, quarter mile wide. They wondered how in the world they were going to be able to traverse that. And so the first man, he said a little simple prayer, but he said it out loud. He said, God, give me the strength to cross this river. And then poof, all of a sudden he had big arms and big legs and he jumped into the water and he swam. It took him two hours to swim across the river, but he made it to the other side. 
After hearing that prayer, the second man said a little prayer out loud. He said, God, give me the strength and the tools to cross this river. Poof, he had big arms and big legs and a boat appeared. And he, he put the boat in the water. 30 minutes, he was across the river. The third man, after hearing those first two prayers, said, God, give me the strength, the tools, and the intelligence to cross this river. Poof, he became a woman. <laughs> he reached into his pocket, pulled out a map, marched upstream just a little bit, crossed over the bridge, and in 15 minutes he crossed that river. Today we're going to talk about getting stronger. Maybe we talk about tools, strength, and we talk about uh, intelligence as well. I want to invite you to remember the theme verse for this entire series. Romans 8, 29. And I've reminded you every week that this is a chance for us to kind of tie two verses together. Romans 8, 28, a very familiar, very memorized scripture. And we know that in all things God works together for the good of those who love Him and are called according to His purposes. And most folks don't remember Romans 8, 29. For those God foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son. In the very first week of this series, Reverend Amanda Lane challenged us to get stronger in our bodies. She, she talked to us about eating the right things and keeping the right things out. She talked to us about exercising. She talked to us about getting stronger. i got to tell you that I've, uh, I've got a gym membership, and all during this series I've been reminding myself of that scripture she preached on. And do you remember, do you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. The second week of this series we talked about growing stronger in our faith. If you remember, I talked about the six phases of faith and how God works to grow us stronger in our faith. Last week we had Scout Sunday. Reverend Jarrett Wallace reminded us, talked to us about getting stronger in our character, how we move through trials and we persevere. Today I want to talk to you about getting stronger in self-control. But remember this, every week we've asked the question, if God's destiny for you is to form you into the image of His Son, what are you doing to cooperate with God's work? So today we're going to talk about self-control, and I, I brought a couple of things here just to help me today. We're going to talk about you and me in 2023. I brought some marbles with me this morning, some little glass marble beads. I put 365 of them up here. What do you think that might stand for? Somebody help me out. That's right. Every day in a year. That's right. And so I'm just going to take some marbles and I want you to think about you and where you might want to get stronger. And I want you to think about these little marbles as maybe one area where you're trying to get stronger, that you've purposed in your life that you're going to let God form you into the image of His Son you're going to cooperate with. You know, for one person, they might have started out 2023 and said, you know what, I've wanted I've wanted to get my finances in the right place. And that may have become their focus for the whole year. And so they're going to they're gonna go after that. Another person might have said, you know what? I am going to finally read the Bible through. I talked to somebody about that's, their, that's one of their 2023 goals. They're reading the Bible every day. And they're going to read the Bible through in a year. The idea is that every day I'm going to read God's word and I'm going to get stronger every day. Another person might just be thinking about their marriage. Maybe they're saying, God, I want a marriage that honors you. Or maybe somebody, their, their little marble will be, I'm, I'm going to focus in on my parenting. I talked to one young couple and they said, you know what? We're just going to try to start praying with our kids every night. It's a very simple thought, right? But what a blessing that could be over time if every day... You added that and you were getting stronger in your family. So if I ask you, what area do you want to get stronger in? Is it your body? Have you figured it out? Have you, I hope you've been challenged. I hope you've been prayerful during this series where you're thinking about how you can get stronger. 
So the big question that we've got here is, do you want to grow? Do you want to get stronger? What are you doing to cooperate with God as He seeks to form the image of Christ in you? Now let's just imagine for a minute that you know what your marble is. You're going after it. By the way, as anybody, we're, we're, this is the 19th day of February, all right? Somebody do the math real quickly. 31 days in January, 19 days in February. How far are we along in this year? Help me out. 50 days on the dot. You've got 315 days left this year to get stronger. What are you going to go after? Now, I don't know what your thing is, but let's just imagine that we all have a place where God's working at us, and we're as a disciple, as a follower of Jesus, we're saying, God, I'm going to cooperate with you in this area. I'm going to go after it, God, and I'm going to ask you to help me. You know how this works, don't you? We get one day under our belt, oh, we feel really good. Let's just say we wanted to get in shape. We went to the gym. We, we, we even did two days in a row. Woo! We're getting excited now, right? We're sore as all get out, but we know that good things are coming. You know what happens normally? We all have the best of intentions. We start out strong. We'll, we'll put several days back to back to back. And we, we think, we got this, we got this, we're getting stronger. But you know what will happen, right? I mean, none of us are perfect. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> none of us are perfect. And guess what's going to happen before long? Instead of hitting the mark, yeah, you're going to miss a day. It might be that couple said, we're going to pray with our kids. If the kids fell asleep on the way home in the car and, you know, we just carried them up to their beds. We missed praying with them today, so we just... We didn't make it into the jar that day, right? And what happens is, even though we all have the best of intentions, when we fall behind in a day or we miss the mark in a day, we get, we get a little derailed. And that derailment causes us disappointment. And that disappointment can cause us to give up. Now today we're going to talk about self-control, all right? And if we're really going to get this, we got to think differently. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I don't mean just be smarter or be wiser or be more intelligent. What I mean is the Bible says that you and I are supposed to be renewing our mind daily. We're supposed to be having our mind renewed. We've got to think differently. We've got to think God's way. So that's what I want to talk to you about today. How do you make sure all during this year that you are continually going after it, whatever your thing is, and you are being renewed in your mind and God is blessing you to be able to follow through in cooperating with Him for what He's doing? Today, self-control, you'll see in your outline there, I've given you a little simple definition of self-control. One, it's only one definition, but self-control is doing the right thing regardless of how you feel in the moment. Self-control is saying, you know what, I'm, I purpose that I'm going to do this, I'm going to keep after it, I'm going to do it. I, I might miss a day, but guess what, I'm going to keep doing it regardless of how I feel, I've made a commitment. Now, let me share a couple of thoughts biblically about self-control, all right? Because self-control, the only way you're going to start something and actually allow that thing to work in your life all year long and God to work in it is through the gift, the fruit of self-control. Galatians says it this way, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. By the way, those get a lot of press time, right? They get a lot of pulpit time. Have you noticed that? Love, joy, peace, patience. The fruit of the Spirit, sometimes we focus in on some of those things instead of some of the whole passage from Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. So you can say it out loud with me. Faithfulness, gentleness, and what? Self-control. Self -control. Now, 
If self-control is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in our lives, you know what that means. Now, you just put on your thinking cap here because we got to think differently, okay? It means that Christians, it means that followers of Jesus Christ ought to be the most self-controlled people on the planet, right? Because God's Spirit is at work within us. I like how the writer of Proverbs says it. The writer of Proverbs says in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13, cling to discipline. That word in the Hebrew sometimes is translated self-control. But did you get the picture? Cling to it. Listen to these words. Do not relax your grip on it because it is your life. The idea here is self-control, discipline, the ability to do the the right thing, the good thing, over and over again, even when you don't feel like it. This is important. It's so important that the writer of Proverbs said, hold on to it, grasp it, grip it. Do not let self-control go. Be disciplined. The writer of Hebrews knows that good things will flow out of our life if we allow the fruit of the Holy Spirit to really lead us in this. So, you got your little outline there. Let me make sure you understand. We're, we're, we're renewing our thinking here. Pastors, preachers, moms, dads, grandparents, they love to talk about commitment. Commitment is a good thing, right? I'm going to commit to getting stronger in my marriage. I'm going to commit to getting stronger in my body. I'm going to commit to getting stronger in my finances. I'm going to commit to getting stronger in my parenting. Commitment is a good thing. But commitment just gets you to the starting line. Have you noticed? Commitment, it just gets you to the starting line to take off. But commitment doesn't help you run the race. What's going to help you get to the finish line? What's going to help you to run for the next 315 days in this year if you've made a commitment? Consistency. Day after day, consistency. Self-control, consistency. Cling to it, discipline, hold on to it, consistency. When you do it day after day, you're going to get stronger. You're going to get, now every, you're going to miss a day. Every once in a while you're going to miss a day. But you just got to go back after it and be consistent and say, this is not just a commitment I've made. Consistency is going to get me to the end of the race. I have a, I have a friend I want to tell you about real quickly. He's actually, my, my son uh, just finished playing college football for the last five years. And there's a, there's a guy who was hired to be uh, the new athletic director of his university. If you know what an athletic director is, that's a person who oversees all the athletic programs, you know, every, every program at a university. His name is Jeff, Jeff Barber. Jeff became an immediate friend of mine. But you know what I saw in Jeff? I saw some phenomenal leadership. He came into a new university. He looked at the culture that was there, and he began changing the culture. But the unique thing is, and I got, you gotta, you got to get this, the unique thing is I saw him do it in a way that I've never seen another leader do it. Jeff called it small things. Every time they tried to do a small thing, he just would tell the story of a small thing. They would literally plant a bush and flowers. He'd take a picture of it, put it on the internet, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, and he'd just put hashtag small things. They'd paint a wall, and they would put the university's name on the wall, brand new painted wall, take a picture of it, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter, hashtag Facebook, hashtag small things. Over and over again, he just began to do these little small things that normally, normally people wouldn't even really talk a lot about. They would just do it and then move on. But no, Jeff, Jeff just kept saying small things, small things. You know what happens? Small things done consistently over and over again add up, don't they? And they add up to big things. You want to grow? You want to get stronger? Commitment gets you to the starting line. 
but it's the consistency. It's the little small thing that you do every day that starts to add up. And I saw, you know what happened? When Jeff began to do small things, small things, small things, other people in the university started doing small things. They started telling little stories about the small things that they were doing. What happened was, here's the amazing thing. I watched a guy practice leadership and I watched that leadership impact and affect other people. And he began to change the culture, not just of an athletic program, not just of the culture of the athletes on the campus, but it began to change the whole culture of a university. Small things. Small things done consistently over time add up. And if you and I could just understand this, we would understand what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our life when it comes to self-control. Proverbs says, cling to it, hold on to it. Guys, this is, this is how you get stronger. You don't just make a commitment. You practice consistency in whatever that place is where God is working in your life. You're going to miss a day. It's all right. Everybody misses a day. But you come back and you say, you know what? I am going to keep working and cooperating with God to do that good work in my life. We've got to think differently. Every day matters. Consistency will get us to the finish line. Now, the most important scripture that I'm going to share with you is right there at the bottom of your outline today. I'm going to close this whole series with it because if you're here today and you're saying, Pastor Stephen, I want to get stronger we're going to read a passage that Paul's going to help us understand the dynamic for how God works with us to make us stronger. So if you have that in front of you, I just want to invite you to read it with me, okay? The Bible says, this is Paul talking to the Corinthian church. He's going to help us understand how God works and how God worked in his life, and it's the same way God works in your life. I'm going to, I'm going to read it, but I'm going to break it down for you too, okay? We're going to kind of take it slow. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning in verse 7, I hope you got your pen. Maybe you underline some things, circle some things, learn some things about this passage. Paul says, In order to keep me from <clears throat> becoming conceited. What in the world does that mean? <laughs> well, Paul's given us a pretty clear image of how he views himself, all right? He comes from a pretty good pedigree. He's a pretty smart guy. He, uh, he was... Uh, he called himself the Pharisee of Pharisees, a pretty religious guy. Paul could naturally think pretty highly of himself. And so he says it this way. He says, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. You've probably heard about this. Now, we don't know. We're never told what the thorn in the flesh that Paul got was. Many theologians believe because, because Paul had been stoned so many times and beaten so many times, it might have been an, his eyesight because he, was, he, was, he might have been going blind. At some of the end of his letters, he talked about having to write his name in large letters. It might have been that he was going blind or he hard to see. Others thought that maybe he had a physical malady. Maybe he'd, he'd been wounded because he'd been beaten. He'd been stoned. We never know. We do not know what his thorn in the flesh was. But notice what he says. He says, three times, three times, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. You might want to underline that. For my power, you might want to underline that word, power, is made perfect in, and then you might want to underline that last word, weakness. So that Christ, he said, therefore, now, this is what God said. He says, I'm going to read that one more time. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Now, listen to what Paul said. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, for when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Can I tell you, I read this passage so many times in my early, early discipleship, I really didn't understand what Paul was trying to communicate here. But I hope you realize what he's saying. Let me just break it down for you. Paul said, I, I could have got conceited, but I had this thorn in my flesh. And three times I said, God, take this away from me. But God said, my grace is sufficient, keyword, enough for you. My grace, my unmerited favor, my blessings, my love for you is enough for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. And it's almost as if Paul said, when after the third time, and after God had said it the third time, I finally got it. I wasn't going to ask anymore. I, I didn't ask him anymore to take away my weakness because I finally got it. What he was saying was that I needed to revel. I needed to delight. You see that word? I needed to boast. I needed to celebrate. I needed to point at my weakness. What was it? What was it? I needed to, I needed, I began to boast in my weakness because now I realize that in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. You know what happens with us? Wow, we can be so self-critical. We think so much of our own discipleship is based on our own power and, and, and ability to move forward. That you know what happens when we are putting small things every day back to back consistently and we're practicing discipline and self-control and then one day, just one day, we blow it. We don't make it. You know what we do? We want to give up. Oh, I'm... I'm not like everybody else. I don't have it. I, I just, I can't follow through on things. I say I'm going to do things and I don't follow through. And we get all self, we get critical and self-deprecating. And we just want to throw in the towel. I just blow it. Guess I'll try it next year. That's kind of what we tell ourselves. But if you will listen, Paul's giving you a greater kingdom picture. Paul is saying, Listen, every one of us are flawed. Every one of us is, every one of us is weak. And in the places where you're weak, in the places where sometimes you fail, in the places where sometimes you, you fall, don't throw a pity party. Don't look at it and say, oh, woe is me, and I'm just a mistake, and I just messed. Don't do that. He's saying celebrate your weakness. He's saying, I delight. Did you hear him? I boast in my weakness. I celebrate. I, I delight in my weakness because now I recognize that wherever I'm weak, that's the moment for his power to show up. And if I could just get it, that I'm human and I'm flawed and I'm going to make mistakes, then God's power can show up and his power can made, be made perfect in my weakness. You see those three little pieces at the bottom there? Three little ideas about how to get stronger here, how to really let self-control work. The first one is this. If you really want to, if you really want to practice self-control, if you really want to follow through and get stronger and let God cooperate with God, the first thing is bankrupt any notion you have of self-sufficiency. Just quit it. Quit saying you can do it all. Quit saying you have all the means and the ability. Quit thinking that way. There's not a person in the room. Are you ready? We're in church. There's not a person in the room who is self-sufficient enough to make it to become like Jesus. Do you understand that? Not a one of us can just become like Jesus on our own. There, so what we need to do is bankrupt the notion that we are self-sufficient. It's not your strength of character or your ability, your, dis your personal discipline that's going to get you to put something every day back to back to back to back. No, because you're weak. You're flawed. Bankrupt the notion that you are self-sufficient. Step number one. You want to really grow this year? What a wonderful prayer to say, God, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I don't have the ability I'm not just, I'm not clever enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not strong enough. I bankrupt that notion that I am self-sufficient. And the second thing is, my, right, listen, admit your weaknesses. Paul said, I boast in my weaknesses now. 
I delight, I like that word, I delight in my weaknesses now because he saw it. Now, this is an opportunity to let God's power show up. If I will just say, where I am weak, you are strong. So admit that you're weak. Don't just throw yourself under the bus. It's saying, hey, you know what? I'm weak. I messed today. But you know what? I'm weak. Admit it. And the third one is this. Receive God's power to keep moving forward. Receive God's power. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So part of what God's Holy Spirit wants to do is meet you and give you power to become all that God wants you to be. Well, I don't know that I've done it. I probably not. Let me just real quickly. I'm going to put about, about 50 of these. Well, that's about how many days that you've already passed through in 2023. You know what the real question is? Not so much this. Not so much that. What might God want to do with the other 315 days left in this year? How might He want to form you into the image of His Son? What areas? What would it look like for you? How can you cooperate with God as He seeks to make you stronger. In the name of Jesus, church, my prayer for you and me is that we'd follow Paul's model. And we hear the words of Jesus. My grace is sufficient. My grace is enough for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Lord, hear our prayer today. Hear our prayer. We bankrupt the notion that we are self-sufficient. We are not. We receive your grace. It is sufficient for us. We admit, like Paul, we boast, we delight, we celebrate our weaknesses. This is the path of a Christ follower. And we receive your power, your power to form us in the image of Jesus. Church, would you pray with me? God, we thank you that you love us and that you care for us. We thank you that the word tells us you formed us from the dust. And you don't give up on us. It's not a one and done kind of thing, God. You are forming us. You are actively forming us into the image of your son. Lord, we pray for our minds today. Help us to think more like Jesus. Lord, we pray for our spirits, our hearts Help us to be passionate about the things that you care for. God, we pray for our hands. Help us to give ourselves the things that, Jesus, you gave yourself for. And, Lord, we pray for our feet. Help us to move forward into the places you've called us to be your disciples. Lord, we pray for our mouths. Help us to speak like Jesus, to speak words of life and encouragement, and Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would give us the fruit of self-control. Small things, even this week, God. Small things in our homes. Small things that can change our church. Small things, God. Help us to be working with you that your power may be proven perfect in our weakness. Oh, you're so good to us. Lord, mold us, shape us, we pray in the strong and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. It's on now. Great. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm reading this book called uh, Atomic Habits. It also says uh, that, you know, uh, a small change each and every day can lead 
to a lifestyle change uh, in the long run. So it's a, it's a great reminder. And also giving is, I think, it falls under this category as well, right? Because when, uh, when we make a decision each and every day to be generous and to give and to invest in the mission of, uh, of Jesus Christ each and every day, uh, in the long run, can lead us into a change of mindset and a change of, uh, a change of behavior on our part. And we can become we can become more generous. We can become more participants of uh, of of what Jesus Jesus wants to do in our in our church and our community. So I'd like to invite you at this moment to to respond into worship and and make a decision each and every day to be generous and to become a uh, participant with Jesus in His ministry in His mission. Um, it's when we it's it's when we we make a decision like that, that we can see things not only changing in our own lives, but changing everything around us. It's a response in worship when we give. So uh, I'd like to invite you to do that. Uh, let, me, uh, let me also remind you to, uh, uh, you can give to the earthquake uh, in addition to, uh, to also giving to the church. And, but just don't remember to add that in the, in the memo of your, of your check, that you are giving to Amcor uh, for the earthquake relief. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you because you have given us so much. You give us so much each and every day, and we are th so thankful for your generosity. And because of your generosity, Lord, we now make, uh, uh, make a decision uh, to, to be generous as you are generous to us. So we thank you for this church. We thank you for the generosity of this church, for, for their participation in the ministry, in the mission of Jesus Christ through uh, Midway United Methodist Church. And we do this because we love you. And we do this because we're thankful for you. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen.
And if you would find your The Faith We Sing hymnal and turn to number 2158 as we close today with Just a Closer Walk with Thee. You can say amen. amen. Hallelujah. You know, you put yourself in a pretty good place today to start your week by walking with Jesus. Our prayer for you is that this week you would feel his presence, that he would be close to you at all times. Now receive this benediction. Go in the name of Jesus and may you bear his image. Go in the presence of Jesus, may you be his peace and his comfort. And go be a light to the world. May the world see in you the image of the Son of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. God bless you, Midway. Have an awesome week.